Part B. A Few Stories from the Lives of the Pious. 1. Rewards on the Knights of Salah. Sheikh Abd al-Wahid Rabta Alay says, One day I was so much overpowered by sleep that I went to bed before finishing my bicker for the night. I saw in my dream a most beautiful girl dressed in green silk. Probably meant a young woman. All parts of her body and even her shoes were engaged in thicker. She said to me, make efforts to possess me. I love you. And then she recited a few couplets about the eagerness of a lover. When I woke from the dream, I vowed not to sleep any more during the night. It is reported that after a full 40 years, he never slept at night and performed Isha and Fajr Salah with the same wudu. It's generally better to use to drink enough water that you do actually go to the bathroom during the night. Um, but you know, you know what I mean. Not allowing it, it, it. You know, if you don't allow, if you just get it again, and you know. But it's important to sleep at night. Muhammad slept at night. But um, anyways, two. What law has created for those who stand before him at night? Shake. Al-Tahar, Sheikh Marhar al-Sa'adi, Rahmata alay. The famous pious man kept weeping for sixty years in love and eagerness for Allah. One night he saw in a dream a few young girls by the side of a pearl trees with gold branches on the banks of the brook, burning with fluid musk, pure and fragrant. The girls were hymning the glory of Allah. He asked who they were. In reply, they recited two couplets, which meant, We have been created by the sustainer of mankind and Rabb of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for those people who keep standing before Allah all night long and praying in supplication to him. Uh, again, I don't like calling young women girls, um, but that's obviously what they mean. Three, the physical appearance of knights of worship. Abu Bakr al-Darir Rahmatullah says, There lived a young slave with me. He fasted all day and stood all night and tahajjud all night long. See, see this, this verse gives uh, context. But let's remember that Islam does not allow fighting to gain slaves, nor does it allow a generational slavery that you're born into slavery. And, you know, One day, he came to me and related, Last night, Against my usual practice, I went to sleep. I saw in my dream that the wall of the mihrab cracked, and there appeared a few young girls. One of them was very ugly, I asked, one of the pretty young girls, who they were. She replied that they were my previous nights, and that the ugly one was this night. Three. I, I, I mean, four. The pleasure of sleep cannot compare with the pleasures of Jannah. An eminent sheikh says, you know, because obviously it was a young man, so if you're calling him a boy, you're calling people under 30 or 25 or whatever. Um, the pleasure of sleep cannot compare with the pleasures of Jannah. An eminent sheikh says, one night I was in a deep sleep and could not get up for tahajjud. I saw in my dream a girl of such beauty as I had never seen in my life. She was giving out such fragrance as I had never smelt before. She handed over to me a piece of paper on which there were written three couplets, which meant, You were so fond of deep sleep that you became unmindful of the high balconies of Jannah, where you have to live forever with no fear of death. Wake up. It is better to recite the Quran and Tahajjud than to sleep. Since then, Whenever I feel sleepy, these couplets come to mind, and the sleep goes away. Oh, maybe it was poetic in its original. Five, praying at night is a sign of Allah's favor on the person. Atta Rahmata Alay writes, I went to the market. A person had a slave girl to sell who was said to be mad. I purchased her for seven dinars and brought her to my house. After a portion of the night had passed, I noticed that she got up, performed wudu, and started her salah. In her salah, she wept so much that I thought 
she would die from excessive crying. After finishing the law, she began to appeal to Allah, saying, O oh my law, by the love thou hast for me, show mercy on me. I read it by telling her that she should rather say, By the love that I have for thee. She got irritated at the suggestion and said, By Allah himself, had he not loved me, I would not be standing here before him while you were in your bed. Then she fell prostrate and recited a few more couplets, meaning, I am growing more and more restless. How can one rest? His peace of mind has been taken away by love, eagerness, and constant anxiety. O Allah, show Raham and give some glad news. Then she prayed in a loud voice, thus, Allah, so far as the matter between me and thee has been a secret, now people have come to know of it. O Allah, call me back. At her saying this, she cried aloud and died on the spot. Six, another story that prayer at night is a sign of Allah's favor. A similar thing happened with Sari, Rahmat Alay. He writes, I bought a slave woman to attend on me. She served me for some time, but I was in the dark about her state of affairs. She had a corner in the house reserved for her salah. After finishing her work, she would go there and offer her salah. One night I noticed her performing salah and then supplicating to Allah. While making her supplication, she said, By the love thou hast for me, do such and such a thing for me. I shouted to her, O woman, say by the love that I have for thee. She replied, My master, if he had not loved me, he would not have made me stand for Salah and deprive you thereof. Next morning, I sent for her and said to her, You are a misfit in your present job. You are exclusively meant for Allah's ibadah. I then gave her some gifts and set her free. There's a lot of importance in Islam for setting free the slaves, and part of the reason for slavery is ending wars and stuff like this. So, um, those who prove themselves valuable to the society in particular are often chosen. Really, uh, seven, excessive weeping in Salah. Sari al Sakti. Rahmata Alay writes about another woman. When she stood up for Tahajjud, she would say, O Allah, Shaitan is but thy creation. Thou hast full power over him. He sees me, and I cannot see him. Thou seest him, and has control over and has control over all his actions, while he has no control over thee. O Allah, save me from the evil that he wishes to do to me. Prevent the wrong that he may try to to deceive me, I seek thy refuge from his evil designs, and with thy help I drive him away. Thereafter she would cry bitterly, and as a result thereof she lost the sight of one eye. People warned her to stop so excessively weeping, lest she should lose her other eye as well. She replied, If it is destined to be an eye in Jannah, Allah will grant me better than this. But if it is destined for Jahannam, then sooner it is lost, the better. Salah, with trust that Allah will protect us from harm. Sheikh Abu Abdullah al Jama says, One day my mother asked my father to fetch some fish from the market. My father left for the market, and I also accompanied him. The fish was bought, and we needed a porter to carry it for us. We engaged a boy who was standing there, and who had offered to do the job for us. He put the load on his head and followed us. While we were on our way, we heard the adhan. The boy abruptly spoke, Allah's summoner has summoned me, and I have to make my wudu too. You know, ablutions. I shall now carry the fish after Salah. If you like, you may wait. Otherwise, here it is, saying, This, he put the load down and left for the masjid. My father thought, that when the poor boy could place his trust in the law so much, we must as well do so in a greater degree. He therefore left the fish there and took me to the masjid. When we three returned after saying Salah, we found the fish lying exactly where we left it. The boy then carried it to our house. My father related the strange story to my mother, who insisted that the boy should be detained to eat some fish with us. 
When the invitation was extended to him, he said, Excuse me, I am fasting. My father then requested him to have iftar at our place. To this he said, It is not possible for me to return once I am gone. Just possibly I may stay in a masjid close to your place. If so, then I shall join you in your dinner. Saying this, he went to the masjid and returned after Maghrib. When the dinner was over, I showed him the room where he could rest in privacy. Now there lived a crippled woman in our neighborhood. We were surprised to see her walking in good health. When we inquired from her how she got cured, she said, I prayed to Allah to heal me for the sake of the barakah that your guest carries. No sooner had I prayed than I was healed. When we went to find the boy in the room where we had left him, the door was shut and the boy was nowhere to be seen. 9. Concentration in Salah It is said of a pious man that once he had a sore on his foot. According to the opinion of the surgeons, if his foot were not amputated, the sore might prove fatal. His mother proposed that the operation should be done while he was absorbed in his Salah. This was done, and no pain was felt by him. 10. Being affected by the Quran recited in Salah, a slave woman's story. Abu Amr Rahmata al says, I saw a slave woman on sale for a very small sum. She was very lean, and her hair was very dirty. Uh, and her hair was dirty. I took pity on her and purchased her. I said to her, Come, woman, let us go make purchases for Ramadan. She remarked, Alhamdulillah, all the months are like for me. She fasted on all days and stood in Salah on all nights. When Eid drew near, you know, the holidays, I said to her, Woman, will you go with me tomorrow to make purchases for Eid? She remarked, My master, you are too much absorbed in this world. She then went into her room and started her Salah and was reciting Surah Ibrahim when she reached the 16th verse of the Surah. Min wa ra'ahi jahannamu wa yusqa bima'an sadid. Which describes the doom of the disbeliever. She repeated it again and again and then gave out a cry and fell.